friends what's up so um actually i just realized we're gonna need this part of the screen so i'm gonna move this over here really quick um i thought i'd show you a little bit um of react's code and we can step through it and see what's going on so i've got this little app i click on show counter and then i can counter and then i can that and that'll remove the counter and i've got all of react's lifecycle methods and things um in here with debugger statements everywhere um, and a debugger statement in a click handler so we can see what's going on there. Um, so I thought we'd just step through through some of the code. Okay, cool. Let's do it. So I'm gonna pop open my dev tools and I'm gonna go over. We'll get rid of that and I'm just fresh state here. Linting warning, I'll get. Cool. Okay, so here we are. Um, I'm gonna just okay. So I'm gonna click on show counter, and I'm going to break on our constructor for the. So the first thing that happens is React is going to construct your component called the constructor function. Um, so let me back up. Let's see what React code is doing. We've got this construct class instance with this work in progress thing um, and i'll be perfectly honest there's a lot of this stuff that i don't understand um it's yeah it's not the simplest stuff i've ever seen um but i do see it oops, on this work in progress thing it's a fiber node uh, so it's nothing to do with fiber we've got a type that's the, the building um this return thing i'm not sure what that is but these yep state node um, I think that refers to our, um, to like our root component building. It's not, wouldn't necessarily, I think this is just the pair, maybe, um, we should, but anyway, yeah, so this is just stuff for fiber to keep track of it, it, actually at react rally, there was a great talk from Brandon. Oh, what's Brandon's that? Um, well. Yeah, he works at Facebook and he gave a great talk about how uh, Fiber works. So you can go take a look. I feel so bad. Um, but yeah, so then we also have props. We actually, I probably should have added props. So that... Then render expiration time. So you'll see in the code, a lot of like timers going on and, and um, the current phase and stuff. I think that's for Fiber to keep track of things for async uh, to work. So, but anyway, we're going to create our instance and here we'll step out of that. Um, so we have our instance now. It's got context, um, which it got from us calling super, uh, as well as props and refs also from super. And the updater is also from super. Um, yeah, I've got to finish this up pretty quick here. Um, yeah, and then the state is what we set and this handle click is something. Normally I wouldn't write my code like this. I'm just doing it for our demo. Normally I just use. I wouldn't have a constructor, but. Um, okay, so then we're doing some state magic adopt class instance. I'm not sure what that's doing, um, but it's. Yeah, here we go. We're gonna uh, check for get derived state from props as well as get snap update. Because if you're using those um, new component APIs. Um, then these unsafe life cycles um, will not, like, are, are not allowed. Um, so it's uh, just checking to see if we're using those things. And if we are, um, then, um, then it actually will use the unsafe version. Uh, and then it's going to warn us about uh, using those things because um, they're gonna go away. They're not fight, um, async safe. So saying, hey, don't use them. They're gonna be removed. Uh, this only happens in. 
okay so uh, we don't need context and so uh, and I think this is referring to uh, deprecated context as well I'm not I'm not positive um, that would be another step through so we're gonna step out of that now it's gonna mount our class so we'll step in there um, and getting a bunch of information so it can be work here we go apply derive state from so it's going to call that get drive state from props that calls into my get drive state that'll now i can do like check the dom for things or 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 sorry i i have i do arguments then i have um, the props and the state and I can derive state from props there we don't normally use this okay anyway we're gonna jump out there there and here we go um, now we're updating the class what we're calling update class component it's actually pretty much the same code path for mounting as you do for updating a, a mounted component uh, except here, if um, their work in progress state noted, presumably, I, I think that is the case for when uh, it's your initial pass, so when you're creating the component in the first place. So that's why we got into this construct class and then we mounted, and we're saying should update is true because it's um, the first time. And then finish class component, this is where we're gonna jump into our render method. So we're doing stuff with refs, um, we're this I'm presuming this is for our um, like capturing errors um, and I'm just barely noticing that people are chatting in the chat um, a whole bunch of questions Renner um, feel free to ask me those questions on my AMA um, I try to keep these videos a little focused um, or actually I've, I've I think I've answered uh, some of those questions as well, but okay, yeah. So we've got um, stuff we're stepping through, just getting some more information before we call. Well, actually, if there was an error thrown, I think we just skipped over. Well, I think there was some some code there for oh, right here. We capture error, then we're going to. Yeah, see this there's some of this stuff. So yeah, if we captured an error but get derived state from all the children. Want to catch will schedule an update to re-render. So it's like don't do any more work because uh component did catch is gonna um re-render everything anyway, so there's no re any more work. Um Okay, so now we're setting a current phase. I, I checked and there are actually only two phases um, and one of them is going away. So you have render and then null, which no phase. Um, but if you go throughout the whole thing, we've got get child context is the only other one. So it's just render and get child context, which I think is interesting, um, uh, especially since get child context is, I think it's deprecated or it's going to be removed eventually uh, because so that was interesting. Um, I guess that's a React debug. But anyway, here now we have the instance. We're going to call render on it um, to get the next children. And then next children will be um, actually, um, well, not, not in this case. So next children will be children. Huh, I wonder why it's getting. Well, in any case, uh, it is setting next children, and we'll dive into our render method. Ta-da! Come back out, and our next children is that um, React element. Next. Uh, it's then we, there, there's a bunch of stuff uh, like this in React's code base um, that, like bitwise operators, all over the place, and I don't feel like I'm smart enough to bitwise operators. There's like and equals and and or equals. 
And uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting. I, I'm guessing it's for performance and um, bundle size. I'm not sure, but it ends up being a little bit hard to follow. Some of it. But in any case, thanks React for making for doing all the hard work so that we. Um. Okay, cool. So we're just been been finished. Uh, class finished. Well, I'm just. Uh, and then once um once a component has finished rendering, then it calls component mount. That's here. I didn't I didn't show you earlier, but like all this started back. Everything from the point. Um, we first constructed the component happened from a dispatch event and that happened when I clicked on that that's that's an event um, hand right back here this is our event handler that's like on every single event this code will be um, and then we go do our updates get into this work because we're rendering a new thing um, and now that we've completed rendering we're going to go through complete root which is like I think it's based off of the, the root of our application. Uh, and then commit root. This invoke guarded callback is for dev tools. It's actually pretty interesting. You should check it, check it out. It, um, it basically allows us to um, use the uh, and and um, have it only pause on our code or something. I think uh, there is a big code comment. Right here. Yeah, in dev mode. You preserve pause on a pretty cool. Um that uh yeah, but the way they do it is by dispatching an event in the browser, a fake event they call started call. Uh and so whatever happens inside work with better. Kind of interesting. Oh, when you turn your head, you're right. Your mic drops your voice. Well, we'll make sure that doesn't happen anymore. Sorry about that. Um, okay. So then we commit all life cycles. Um, and then we call our opponent did mount. Gets into it. Great. Then we play through and that's it. And then I click this. And that's going to handle do that handle click. And that was an event, right? So dispatch interactive event that happens there uh, gets to this dispatch event thing that we saw before. Um, but this time we're not uh, re-rendering or we're not rendering a new component. We're just updating um, or, or we're, we're calling a callback. And so that's where this uh, invoke guarded callback stuff is so that it can preserve this pause and caught exception thing. Um, the, yeah, then it eventually calls callback that that callback is coming from this run events in batch it's actually a little bit hard to follow because it queues up all the events that or all the callbacks that need to handle that event and then it calls them so that's where it's accumulating and then has an event queue and things kind of kind of fun stuff they're like re um, implementing the entire web platform in javascript so they can have more control over things and somehow it's a lot faster um so yeah then we're gonna call this dot set state. I'm going to dive into that here really quick. So that's just a short function on the prototype. We'll dive into the NQ set state because set state is actually not uh, not exactly synchronous. It does happen synchronously, but they, they kind of queue it all up and then make it happen at the end of the event loop. And I haven't figured out where it all actually takes place. Um, but here's the schedule work, and this is where we're going to get some uh, more of our uh, event or our lifecycle methods called. So I um, uh, play through, and then we get derived state from props again. Play through some more. Component should update. Let's go back. Check, um, check should component update. We go back up one more, and that's checking if we're doing a force update. Uh, otherwise, check component should update, and if we should, then we do the rest of our stuff. Uh, yep, and then we'll play, and, and this is all coming back kind of in that same uh, code path that we had before with this begin work, 
perform unit of work uh, stuff that happened when we initially rendered uh, our component. So yeah, it's right here is where we've got a bunch of different things happening for different types of nodes, which is kind of interesting. Um, so the question is, I have no experience with React Native. Is this flow similar to for React Native? Yes, I'm pretty sure that, oh, sorry. Some of this is, lots of this is different. Anything that says React DOM development is React DOM specific. Look, everything. So yeah, I guess React Native will function differently even for these things. Interesting. Uh, React itself is actually pretty small, so that's not a huge surprise. Um, okay, cool. So we'll play through, and now we're in our render because we've returned true from should component update, and then we get snapshot right before update. So it's gonna it says, okay, get me the React elements, and now get me the snapshot. Um, and, and so you can do like check the DOM and stuff before we actually do the update. And then the update happens, and we have the component did update. Cool. All right, and then we play through, and we're done. And then we uh, click here to unmount. Let's step back um, on this component. We will unmount. There's a bunch of stuff going on here. This is our, uh, so we've got our dispatch event because we are clicking on that. That's gonna go through here and call some set state stuff. Uh, let's see, I'll call back this, this function, which we don't actually dive into, I think. Uh, yeah, somewhere we, um, we actually uh, set state in our um, app component here to not show the counter anymore. Um, and then that leads us into unmounting. Mount, safely call component will amount. That safely thing is just calling this invoke guarded callback so we can uh, leverage. The um, and so eventually that calls into this um, all component will unmount with timer referenced right there. So all of this invoke guarded callback is everything from uh, well, these three stacks, it dives into a couple functions before eventually calling this uh, second argument. Uh, so it calls this all safely inside of the um, event dispatch thing so that our code, if it throws an error, then it'll uh, it'll stop there. Um, so yeah, then from there, it unmounts and we're done. That's pretty much it. I do have to get running, um, but uh, yeah, hopefully this was enlightening. It really is... Uh, not like super duper difficult to uh, debug stuff. So if you ever want to do this, just pop open in your own application and write a little component that does all of this stuff. And um, and then you can play around with it and see what's going on. Um, it's not difficult to dive in, um, but I'll be honest, it's a little bit difficult to understand what's going on. Um, most of this stuff is happening in React DOM. As we discovered, there's like way more code in React DOM. Like, 17,000 lines versus 1,400. So there's that. Um, but that said, it uh, um, like, how do you learn? You go through and, and you try things out and stuff. So hopefully that's helpful. I will see you all another time. This was fun. Bye.